I used to just think I was a direct descendant of Charles Darwin's uh, older brother. It turns out I am a descendant of his, one of his brother's nephews or something obscure like that, um, which is good enough for me. My name's Stephen Darwin. Uh, I own Darwin's Limited in Cambridge, Massachusetts, along with my wife, Isabel Darwin. We co-founded it when we were 27 years old, uh, 25 years ago. And at the time, um, by the Mount Auburn Hospital, that whole uh, Brattle Street, Tory Row sort of district, there was this little market down the road that nobody would ever go into because it was just so run down. And we were constantly like, well, if, you know, if somebody would just take over that store and do something with it and so we could like get a bulb of garlic or a can of anchovies or something, it would be so much more convenient for the neighborhood. And, and, and that's how that whole brainchild sort of came alive. Coffee is like wine. It has its agriculture and it, it, it varies from season to season and lot to lot. So to actually blend coffee that tastes the same all the time is quite a trick. And so what most people don't understand is like, you know, th this whole fad that's going on with, you know, coffee being roasted on premise and it's like it's super fresh and everything. It's like the, the, the secret in the industry is you, nobody wants to be drinking fresh coffee. Coffee has to have time to mature and has to have time to off gas. The best time to really drink coffee is about a week after it was roasted which means that you can literally get coffee from anywhere in the world. And if it's roasted, packaged, and sent to you in the right time parameters, you can be drinking it at its most optimal time. I had one professor at Harvard uh, regarding our store on Mount Auburn Street. He said to me, he goes, you know, Steve, there's all those people and people that we see on television. Everybody thinks those are the people running the world. And he goes, they're not. It's the people that are one step below them that are really running the world, the ones that are protecting their anonymity. Nobody wants them to know who the hell they are, right? He goes, they're your customers here in this cafe. We literally have a cross-section of the entire community of Cambridge that comes into Darwin's, but it is such an eclectic city. So to try to pin down who is the Darwin's customer, I, I, I gave you the best I could, I, <laughs> but it's all over the map, it really is. We don't really see ourselves opening a Darwin's outside of Cambridge. We, we like to think of ourselves as this quirky, sort of unique place to the city of Cambridge, which is why we feel that our regular customers like it. I live in Inman Square, and all my stores are right around Inman Square. So for me, it's like, I, if, you know, if I want to drive my car because I need my toolbox, great. If I want to just ride my three-speed bicycle, I ride my three-speed bicycle around and do my bookkeeping or whatever it is that I need to do. I think anybody that comes to Boston would want to come to Cambridge. It's hard to tell whether Cambridge is a city or a neighborhood. And I think it's because there's all these different neighborhoods are making up this city. And that may sound cliche, but I mean, I really feel that in Cambridge. 